Hello everybody. I get asked all the time about what my recommendation is for the best place to learn to code. And I always say the Odin Project. And it is a free website, so I'm not sponsored by them or anything like that. It's at theodinproject.com and you can just go there and get started. So I wanted to give you a quick tour around the course and what you can kind of expect to be doing when you get started. So the first thing I did was view full curriculum. And you're offered these things, right? So you've got loads of different paths. The one I would recommend that you go with is the foundations at the start. Just doing the foundations is probably gonna get you to a point where you can start building basic websites. So if we just click in and explore, this is the foundations course. So how it will work, you're gonna get a big introduction on how to ask questions, how the whole course works in general, the different resources that are there. And if you click into this, it's gonna break down everything section by section. Now the introduction and stuff like that, you can kind of fly through really, really quickly. Uh, a note on human language, what comes next. So I would read through all of this stuff and I used to set the goal of maybe one page per day. No, I didn't. I set it for like two pages per day, I think it was something like that. Uh, let me just go back, but it will track your progress the whole way. So I think at the beginning, I wanted to get through the introduction, let's say in one day. And if I just look at it now, I did because it's just reading basic stuff and introduction. Prerequisites, these are not as drastic as you might think. So the prerequisites, if you click into them, uh, computer basics. This is just the very, very, very basics of how the internet works. But all of these things are links that you should read. Um, again, if you sign in, you can track your progress, but you can just click through. And the nice thing about this is you have a course to follow. You're not wasting a load of time deciding, oh, what do I do next? Where should I be? Have I missed something? Am I wasting time? Is this tutorial too advanced? Is it not advanced enough. And you get rid of all that nonsense by just having a course that you can follow day to day. So again, I would be just setting learning goals. Uh, you learn about DNS servers, what is an IP address. All this stuff is important, especially if you're gonna be working with even web builders, you're gonna to need to know all of this stuff because that's the type of jargon that we use in this industry. Um, if you click back, so let me just go back to the foundations. I'm not going to go through every single one because you'll get the idea. But this one, this is the main reason that I think the Odin project is the best course to do. And it's because it takes you through the installations, right? So if you go through here, they're going to show you making sure, depending on what, what your, your um, operating system is, they are going to guide you through the whole process. So you can decide, are you gonna use a virtual machine so you can use Linux? Or are you on Mac OS and you're able to just use um, uh, the normal uh, Linux terminal commands? I would suggest probably using WSL2 if you don't have a MacBook, but um, I think they don't advise with it, or at least they didn't when I did the course. But yeah, you can go through all of that. Um, that installation process is massive because it just sets up your local environments to actually code in as if you are a proper professional. And that will stick with you as you move further. You're gonna learn how to navigate the terminal. It's gonna be crazy because I remember when I first did it, I was thinking, oh my God, this is insane. I'm way out of my depth. But then after like two days, you feel like an absolute genius when you're doing it. So. Uh, it is fun, a little bit difficult at the start, but if you're able to progress through these kind of prerequisites, I would say you're, you kind of have a brain that you could, um, you could do the coding. If that type of stuff is scaring you away, I would say coding is probably not for you. Um, it tells you about text editors, command line basics, this is brilliant. Um, I spent ages doing this and I learned how to, how to use the terminal. So you learn about CDing in and out of things and so on. And that stuff is going to be really important to you down the line. And then this one is huge here, uh, Git Basics. This is something that so many people skip, but it is essentially you're learning how to do Git branches, set up repos, all of that important stuff um, that is vital in your day-to-day -day job as a programmer. 
And then once you've got the basics set up, now you're ready to actually start coding. So they introduce it with the basics of HTML. And a lot of people say, oh, should I do free code camp or code academy or should I do the Odin project? Well, the Odin project actually uses loads of stuff from free code camp because it's a big open source learning um, curriculum. And they actually put you through a lot of the best parts of free code camp. So if you look here, they're, they're linking to free code camp and they do this throughout. And as you go, they're linking you to free code camp and other open source materials that you would be using in your day to day life as a developer, you'll be sent to the MDN docs, loads of stuff that you're going to need on a daily basis as you improve. And again, you start from the absolute beginnings of HTML and it's, it's such a good way to get started and they're constantly improving it. And then, yeah, they'll also introduce you. So one thing I talk about a lot when we're learning any new skill is you want a multimodal approach. So a multimodal approach means you're not just watching videos, you're not just reading blog articles and you're not just coding. You're doing all of those things. So you're touching, feeling, doing, you're doing everything together. You're watching, you're reading, you're writing. And they actually introduced me to Kevin Powell. Now, if you haven't seen Kevin Powell already, he is a CSS wizard and you're going to learn loads from him. And I learned a ton from him. And the only way I found him was through the Odin project. They sent me directly to his playlists and you get these assignments at the end of every um, page, every challenge. And the more of those you do, you're going to be picking up skills and building your own confidence and building your portfolio. So it's such a good way to learn. Um, so yeah, you go through the HTML basics and then you build a project. So every section you'll see here, this started, um, it ended with a project. The CSS part also ends with a project. Um, you can see you build a landing page. You learn Flexbox, you learn CSS foundations. This stuff is absolutely vital. The box model, these are all essentials for web design in general. Even if you want, don't want to be a full um, front end developer with code, this stuff is going to be really important if you want to get into web design, UX design, even just learning the terminology on how to interact with developers. I would recommend doing this course. Uh, then you move on to JavaScript. Now you're going to get through, I would say up to Flexbox. I believe I got through all of that in two weeks and I was thinking I am a genius. I'm built the code. And then I got to JavaScript and this whole part is going to take ages. Uh, rock, paper, scissors challenge. I couldn't even do it in the end. Um, could not get through it. Even today, uh, I never went back and looked at it, but I remember just being like, this is way too hard. So don't worry if you are going through it and you do get stuck, that's totally normal. Um, you'll come up with the Etch-A-Sketch one. I actually did this in my newsletter where I asked ChatGPT 3.5 and ChatGPT 4 to compete doing the instructions from this challenge. So I'll link to that uh, down below as well that you can have a look at. But the Odin project is absolutely great. And then you build a, a, cal a calculator, which is obviously fantastic. So you get through the foundations course. I can't remember exactly how long this took me, but I remember the vast majority of time was spent doing the JavaScript basics. That took a long time. Like even just reading these, uh, let me just show you a lesson. So this is what you should know by the end of it. But if I come down to the assignment, so all of these links, I was following and reading. So absolutely every single part of this. And you go down to the assignment, you try all of those things, and then you do the knowledge check. I didn't always read the additional resources, but I was a pretty good student. So I, I read almost everything that was linked, which just takes a long time. Um, so if you are doing it and you're really serious about making this your career, I would go through almost everything. Additional stuff, yeah, you can skip sometimes, but do every aspect of it. If they tell you to read something, just read it. And so that's the foundations course. That's what I did. That was my first step into coding and it was difficult, but it definitely built confidence and interest um, in the whole idea of coding. So that was the very first thing that I did. 
And then if I go back to all paths, you can see it's a very logical uh, course. So you start with the foundations course regardless, and then you have this option here. So you can either go full stack JavaScript or you can do uh, full stack Ruby on Rails. Now I never did Ruby, and the reason was, I believe in 2016, 17, this path would have been a lot more popular because a lot of massive apps were built on Ruby on Rails. Nowadays, I haven't actually seen any jobs looking for people with Ruby. A lot of people are looking for JavaScript and TypeScript. So this is the path I would suggest that you do if you're trying to decide. This is the one that I did and a little secret, I never actually finished the whole thing. <laughs> uh, but yeah, here you can get started. And again, it's the same formula as the one before where you've got projects, they send you links. But if you just look, you do more intense JavaScript, like 12 projects. If we just look at what they are, tic-tac-toe, you make a library. I believe that's with classes and objects, yeah. Um, tic-tac-toe, that was with classes, yeah. Um, restaurant page, a to-do list, classic. Um, then you go through JavaScript in the real world. You learn about limp, uh, linting, dynamic user interact interactions, validation, all of that stuff is like massive. And I, I don't care how many tutorials you watch, you're just not gonna touch on all of these things. The structured manner of this and the linear progression makes it so you don't waste any time, but you also don't skip important things. Like you work with APIs, you learn about async await, you make a weather app. I remember that one because you're integrating an open API and creating your weather app. Um, and that's really exciting when you get that going. Um, recursion, God, I hate that. Uh, this type of stuff here, I didn't like, but I did it. Uh, hash map, data structures, all that type of stuff. I think it was around here where I kind of, did I keep doing all this? I think I did do all this, yeah, I did. A deeper look at Git, this is vital. Anything to do with Git is a must. Testing, yes, I did that, Mocha. And then you do conclusions. So I know I'm just rushing through this, but you can absolutely come in here and dig around. Let me see where this takes me. So then advanced HTML and CSS. I actually recommend doing this section before this section uh, from memory because being an advanced at HTML and CSS is gonna carry over a lot to React and a lot to day-to-day front-end development tasks. So if you go in here, this is, from what I remember, mostly about forms. Uh, yeah, transitions, transforms, keyframes, all really important stuff. Like in the real world, I use a lot of libraries to do this stuff, but it's important to know and understand. Uh, meaningful text, accessible colors, all that's coming into your UX design and understanding of accessibility, which is really underrated, I think. Um, I think there's a statistic where 20% of website visitors have some kind of accessibility issue. And we should be inclusive of those people when we're building the web. Uh, so learning this type of stuff is underrated, in my opinion. Uh, responsive design, I think this part needs to be way sooner in the course, if I'm gonna be completely honest, because up until this point, all of my projects were desktop only, which looks awful. I, like if you look at portfolio and it has nothing responsive, it's gonna look terrible. So that's why I suggest learning the responsive stuff, doing the advanced HTML and CSS course before going so deep in JavaScript. Because if you imagine like, if you know all this stuff, then those 12 projects that you had to spend all this time learning the JavaScript for, the library, etc., they're gonna be responsive enough to be on your actual portfolio. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't advise doing that straight away, but again, it's all there for you. Um, React then, React when I was doing this was outdated, but it has since been updated. And that's what I would recommend that you do. So I can't remember, because it's different than when I did it, but yeah, you do see the application. You do loads of really cool stuff here, I remember. Class components, React testing. 
the React ecosystem. Is there something to do with Next.js? I think there might be now. Maybe not. No, I don't think there is. But yeah, React is excellent. You get through that, you build your projects. This is kind of, at this point, you're going to be feeling like a proper developer that you can get out in the world and do jobs. This is where I started to actually work, I believe. So to get to this point, I think it took me maybe three to four months, something around there. I did get a little job in between here somewhere. And then I dug through Node as I was doing one of my first gigs. So I learned about Express and built with MongoDB. Yeah, I didn't do all of this. I definitely didn't do all of this, but I started to, to work at this point. So that's where I kind of fell off. And then it tells you all the way through getting hired. So as you can see, it is everything from completely nothing all the way through to being hired. You know, you can get all the way through from completely nothing to hired. I had a comment on my video the other day uh, talking about the speed at which people talk about learning to code. And somebody had done a computer science degree and they said, well, I've been doing a computer science degree for a certain amount of time and I still don't feel confident enough to get a job. And the reason why I did feel confident in a shorter period of time, maybe it was just ignorance and overconfidence, but it was because what I studied was completely focused towards getting a job. It was nothing to do with computer science. I wasn't learning extra things. I wasn't going through tutorial hell necessarily. I was watching a lot of tutorials to get me through some of the projects for sure, but the actual course, it was just thump, a straight dagger all the way through, follow this and you will get there. So that's why I recommend it. And I recommend that you do it as well because it takes you through com from completely nothing to being uh, hired essentially. And there's loads of support. It's open source, it's free. There's no reason, in my opinion, not to do this course. And again, you could supplement it with other courses and other videos. So that's the video, a uh, very low, a very broad overview of the Odin project and some of my opinions of my experiences using it. And I do recommend it. And if you do use it and you have tried it, leave a comment down below and let people know, did you find it useful? Did you find it too hard? Did you find it too easy? What was your experience and is there something better out there? But that's what I recommend for total beginners and the best of luck with it.